want to ask ourselves the question, who will be in the lake of fire? I wonder if you've ever uh, wondered that. Uh, Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fine brimstone, which is the second death. The fearful, those who are faithless, I wonder, is that you? Unbelieving, those who have not received Christ as their saviour. Abominable, those who are disgusting, murderers, those who commit murder. This includes abortion and euthanasia. Whoremongers, that is fornicators, sorcerers, those who use drugs and practice, practice witchcraft. This is a list of the people who will be in the lake of fire and brimstone. Idolaters, those who worship false gods or idols. This would include worshipping images of singers, film stars, models, etc. Liars, those who tell lies, that's all of us. Uh, the crowning uh, unforgivable sin is unbelieving. All other sins can be forgiven by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 11 Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, that sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And this is speaking to Christians, it says here, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So just in, just in case you haven't realised, if you do those things, it doesn't mean you can never be saved. It means that if you die without Christ, you'll never be saved. But these people have been born again. These people had received Christ as their Saviour, and as a result, they had been forgiven of all of this, this terrible list of sins. Fornicators, those who have sex outside of marriage, idolaters, those who worship false gods or idols. Uh, as I said, this would include uh, worshipping images of singers, film stars, models, etc. Already mentioned. Uh, adulterers, that's, uh, we look at uh, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10 and verses 11 and 12, and he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. I wonder, does this include you? Many people in this world, they don't understand what God really calls sin. We evaluate things on a different scale than God does. God's laws are absolutely perfect. They're absolutely spot on in every way. And you and I have a different uh, category that we might put sin in. Some of us don't think this is sin and other people think this is sin. And we've got to understand that God is the one who sets the rules. He's the boss, so he is the one that has made the laws. And we have gone ahead and broken them. And that's called sin in the sight of God. Now we need forgiveness for those sins. And that's where the Lord Jesus Christ comes into the equation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I wonder, has he saved your soul? Are you on your way to heaven? At the moment of death, where will you be? Heaven through faith in Christ or down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who today can be your saviour. If you call upon him, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And uh, effeminate, it's a young male who submits his body to unnatural, unbridled lust with a man, abuses of themselves with mankind, one who lies with uh, a male as with a female, a sodomite, or you might call them homosexual. The thieves, we know what they are, covetous, those who are eager to have more, especially what belongs to others, drunkards, that's obvious, revilers, those who are abusive, extortioners, those who are robbers, the people who practice these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the next verse says, verse says, And such were some of you, past tense. In other words, these people 
are now Christians. Why? Because they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They received him as their saviour. You need to do the same. Otherwise, at the moment of death, you'll be in hell. God does not want us to go there. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So there is forgiveness for these sins if you would turn to God from your idols. Come to God in repentance, that is, agree with God that you're a sinner. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I wonder, at the moment of death, will you be in the lake of fire? There's no need for that. You and I will have to stand before the judgment of God if we die without Jesus Christ as our Saviour. We will be in hell. We'll be in the judgment of God. And not only that, then to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. God has made the provision for your salvation in mind that we would be in heaven. And it's all through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I wonder what will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ. I want to preach about adultery and murder. This is uh, Psalm 51. This is a man called King David in the Old Testament. He had committed adultery before the Lord. And he was guilty of that adultery. But the point is this, he realised he'd done wrong. And he got right with God. You know, a Christian can never ever lose their salvation, no matter what they do. If you're saved by the grace of God, you, you can never ever go to hell. But if you die without Christ, you will be in hell. I'm here to tell you that your soul can be saved through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Psalm 51, verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the more, under the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash, wash me uh, freely from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, and that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and re renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me uh, from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, and a, a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion, build thou the walls of Jerusalem, then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks unto thine altar. He was a man, he's called King David in the Old Testament, and he committed adultery with Bathsheba, and uh, her husband uh, was called Uriah, and he not only had committed adultery against this man, Uriah, and against uh, Bathsheba. But the 
point is this, he actually ordered the, the, the killing or the murder of this man Uriah, so that he would cover up his sin. But you see, we can never ever cover our sin. You and I have sinned, we have hidden sins. We have sins that maybe no one else knows about, but God knows. See, God knows everything, he's the omniscient one. That means he knows everything. He's omnipresent, that means he's present everywhere at the same time. And he's also, also om, omni, omnipotent, omnipotent. That means he's all powerful. And so God is present everywhere at the same time. He knows everything. He knows about our secret thoughts. Nothing can escape the eye of God. God knows absolutely everything about us, down to little, every little detail in our lives. He knows all about us, even the, the things that we think that no one knows about. God knows about these things. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We're in trouble, and we're in trouble with God because of our sin. And you and I need forgiveness for our sins. Without that forgiveness, we are going down to hell. We're facing the judgment of God. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I wonder, have you come in repentance toward God? That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you're a sinner, and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I want to preach now about deceitfulness, lies and foolishness. Psalm 52, verse 1. To the chief musician, Masculine, a son of David, when uh, Doeg the Edomite came and saw, uh, told Saul and said unto him, David is come to the house of Ahimelech, why boastest thou thyself in mischief? O mighty man, the goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue deviseth mischiefs, like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good and lying rather than to uh, speak righteousness, Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue, God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling, pla dwelling place, and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear, and shall laugh at him, Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever, because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Psalm 53 verse 1, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them is gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. There were they in great fear, where no fear was. But God has scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God hath despised them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion, when God bringeth back the captivity, captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. I want to preach now about pride. Pride is a thing that we, I believe that we all suffer with to varying degrees. First of all, what is pride? It's arrogancy or pop. A person that feels so superior that they have no need to obey God. It's really the root of all sin, pride is. Where did pride come from? Ezekiel 28 verses 11 to 19, Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, 
Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden. And this could never be said of uh, the king of Tyre, but I believe it's speaking concerning Lucifer. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. As we saw here, now the king of Tyrus was clearly not in the garden of Eden. This is speaking of Lucifer. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, sardius to, uh, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sa sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workman of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Tablets are tambourines or uh, timbrels. Lucifer is a musical being. He has been very successful in leading people away from God by music. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. This is where iniquity came. It originated with Lucifer, that is the devil, or Satan. By the multitude of thy uh, merchandise, they have filled in the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Here we see pride. This being called Lucifer, known as the devil or Satan now, he was lifted up with pride, and he had to be cast out of heaven. The Lord cast him out of heaven. He was lifted up with pride. He says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries with the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Isaiah 14 verses 9 to 17. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones in the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they that speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp, remember, that's what pride is, it's really pomp. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. In other words, thy pride is brought down to the grave. And the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did, didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Yes, this is what's going to happen to Lucifer, the devil, Satan going to be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the, his prisoners? Notice in verse 13, and 14, there are five eyes mentioned. It's all about Lucifer. He's so puffed up, he's so uh, consumed with himself in pride. 
And that's what sin is when it comes into our lives. It's pride. It's living apart from God. Living a life that is completely void of God. And we don't take God into consideration. See, the point is this. Every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So you and I have a time when we will be before God. You see, when we die at the moment of death, we're either going to be in heaven through faith in Jesus Christ as our Saviour, or down in hell if we reject Christ and if we die in that condition. You know, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Yet God will have all men to be saved and to be come to a knowledge of the truth. Can you leave? Can you leave? I'm here to do a job. Do you get um, council approval for that? I don't, I, need, I don't need council approval. What if I ring the police? Ring the police then. Oh shit, it's all my room and not Go ahead. Yeah? Go ahead, Rick. Do you know that Illuminati? Sorry? Do you know the Illuminati? I know the Illuminati, yeah. Yeah, why don't you talk about them too? Go on. Let's I'm only interested in Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Hey, why don't you walk on? No one wants to hear your shit. No, we I'm going to hear it. And by the way... Luke 18, Luke 18 verses 10 to 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Notice, he's praying with himself. He's not actually praying to God at all. He said, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, so here's two different people. Here's a man full of pride. And he is also a publican. He is a man of tax collector. But in reality, he's not full of pride. He understands his sinful condition before the Lord. He says this, And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes under heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Notice in verses 11 and 12, there are also five eyes mentioned. It's all about the Pharisee himself. Genesis 2 verses 15 to 17, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 3 verses 1 to 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. See, he's questioning what God actually said. Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the, uh, the uh, serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So here is a flat out lie. He's lying. He's saying that God said that basically they would not die. But the point is this, God had warned them. If they partook of that tree, they would die. And they did die spiritually in that day. And they began to die physically in that day. For the wages of sin is death. That's why we have death upon the earth, because of sin. It's the result of sin. And you and I need to have forgiveness for our sins. Without that forgiveness, we are heading down to hell. We're facing the judgment of God. God does not want to have to judge us, but he will if we die without Jesus Christ as our Saviour. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. For God doth know, he said in verse 5 of Genesis uh, 3, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, 
and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So here's the woman, and she wanted to be as a god, knowing good and evil. In other words, she wanted to make decisions and live without obeying God. This is where pride came into humanity. And pride is basically the root of all sin. We do what we want, when we want, and we don't care what anyone says, even God. We're not, we're not concerned about that. And this is wrong. God created us to worship Him and to glorify His name. And you and I are not doing that when we're sinning. So we need forgiveness for our sins. Uh, Romans 5 verse 19, For as by one man's uh, disobedience, that's Adam, many were made sinners, why does it say man's disobedience when it was Eve that was in the transgression? 1 Timothy 2.14 says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. In Genesis 3.16, the last part, God said to Eve, Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. In other words, the man is supposed to be the boss at home. Adam was the leader. That made him responsible. He should have said no to Eve. When uh, Eve offered the, the uh, fruit to him, he should have said no because he's responsible, because he's the boss in the home. Romans 5.19 goes on to say, So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. But here's the problem. Psalm uh, 10 verse 4, The wicked through the pride of their countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. See, God wants us to have him in all of our thoughts. We cannot have him in all of our thoughts if we're not saved. If we're not children of God, see the Bible says, we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. I'm here to tell you that your soul can be saved. See, the heaven or hell at the moment of death, what will it be for you? Determined by what you do with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ for your eternal salvation. Repentance to Lord God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you're a sinner and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, chapter 4 and verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. We were created for God's pleasure. Living without God is, is prideful and therefore sin. Righteousness can only be had by faith in Christ as our Saviour. Romans 3, 21 to 26, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent, uh, set forth to be a propitiation, that means mercy seat, through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins or forgiveness of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that is God's righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. I'm here to preach the Lord Jesus Christ to you. You need to come to know him as your Saviour. Without him, we are heading down to hell. We're heading for the judgment of Almighty God in hell and eventually the lake of fire for all eternity. Make a wise choice today. You can get right with God as a result of repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you're a sinner. Be honest before God. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ 
and thou shalt be saved. In whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you and thanks for listening.